Are you one of those people who simply cannot say no to something you think is a good buy? Do you find it challenging not to buy things you don't need? You're definitely not alone. Unfortunately, this behavior is one of the reasons people often find themselves in financial trouble. Welcome to another exciting video from Saving Savers, where we'll share the 10 warning signs you shouldn't really buy that thing. 10. You always pay your credit card's minimum. Here's one of the surest signs you will want to forego buying that thing. You can't seem to put your credit card payments in order. If you've been paying only the minimum of your credit card balance monthly, now's not the time to add to your burden. Sure, swiping your card is easy. But this also means increasing your monthly credit card repayments. If you already find it challenging to lower your credit card debts, it will be more problematic to go ahead with the purchase. You're digging a deeper hole for yourself, one which might be challenging to get out from. So try to go slow on your credit card use and find more concrete ways to repay your debts before splurging on anything else. Number 9. You don't have an emergency fund. No one knows when he'll need an expensive surgical procedure or a costly hospitalization. No one knows when he'll figure in an accident or a loved one meets one. The point is, no one can predict the future. And if you don't have your emergency fund now, there's a good chance you'll be in a hellhole if an emergency occurs. Even if you have an emergency fund, it is not a good idea to use that money to buy that thing you want. If you go ahead and splurge, you won't have the necessary funds to use should an emergency arise. You'll have a headache trying to borrow money from parents, relatives, and friends. While they might help you, there's no guarantee they won't expect you to repay the loan. Number 8. You haven't reviewed your budget. Most people have working budgets to help them track their spending. It would be nice to allot money for once. These are items you don't necessarily need, but would like very much to have anyway. A new dress, a new pair of shoes, a piece of new jewelry, and other new items would fall under this category. Unfortunately, if you don't know how much allowance you have left for wants, buying that thing might not be a good idea. It would be best to have an expense tracker or a budget app on your smartphone. You can check your wants budget and how much leeway you have left before making any purchase. Number 7. You are using future money. One of the worst mistakes people make when buying things is using future money. They pin their buying decisions on the premise of having sufficient funds in the immediate future. For example, you expect a $1,000 bonus next week, so you go on a shopping binge. Since you don't have the money yet, you ask your parents or friends to loan you some. In some cases, you might think of swiping your credit card. After all, you have a grand in several days. Unfortunately, no one can see the future. What if your company decided to cancel giving the bonus because of unforeseen circumstances? Maybe they made an error in the computation. Instead of $100, someone made an error in adding another zero to the figure. So you only have $100 to pay off the $1,000 you owed people for shopping to your heart's content. Here's a tip. If there's future money, wait for the cash to land in your hands before doing anything with it. Number 6. You are stressed out or upset about something. People say shopping is one of the best ways to combat stress and anxiety. Treating yourself to fancy clothes or expensive bling triggers the release of dopamine in the brain. This substance makes you feel good, further justifying your behavior of buying that thing even when you don't need it. It has become a habit. Every time you feel down, you'll head to the nearest shop and splurge on something. You should know this behavior only masks the real problem, your anxiety or whatever you're stressed about. You might feel good after buying, but the issue will still be there. The solution? You go buy yourself another item. It would be best to tackle whatever's upsetting you head on. And if it's stress you're experiencing, Try exercise, relaxation, and other activities that don't involve money. Stress, anxiety, and worries should never be the reasons for buying that thing. Number 5. You feel uncomfortable. Most of us tend to overlook a particular product's downsides by focusing more on the positives. 
For example, we know that comfort is one of the most crucial considerations when buying a new pair of shoes. So, you try on a nice pair of shoes because it has the style and design you love. Unfortunately, it doesn't feel very comfortable when you try walking a few steps. You try to justify your decision to buy the shoes by highlighting their style, design, and maybe even their brand. When you get home, do you think you will wear that shoe for at least six hours? You might still wear them, but only on rare occasions because the pain will be unbearable. So, if you decide to buy something wearable, it would be best to consider comfort. Try to visualize yourself wearing that item for several hours most days of the week for a few years. If you can't, don't buy it. Number 4. You feel pressured. We get it. It's expected of salespeople to make as many sales as they can. Some of them depend on their sales commission for a living. If they cannot get a customer to buy, they won't have groceries to bring home at the end of the week. So, you can expect salespeople to push items you don't need right in your face. They might employ different tactics in encouraging you to buy the most expensive, albeit not necessarily the best, item on the floor. If you feel pressured by the salesperson, find the courage to resist. Listen to your gut and block out any chatter from your surroundings. It's not only salespeople who have this knack for pressuring you into buying something. Sometimes, your siblings, parents, relatives, friends, or co-workers might also nudge you into buying something. Don't give in. After all, it's your money, not theirs. Number 3. You seek validation. Some people buy things to prove their worthiness and make them more likable to other people. Some might even buy things to prove to themselves that they can. The problem with this behavior is that it can turn you into a brand-conscious buyer. Although there's nothing wrong with being loyal to a particular brand, it can hurt your budget if you continuously buy products even if you don't need them. Another issue with this behavior is that most people don't recognize it. For example, you enter a boutique store and all the staff are busy entertaining buyers other than you. Could it be because they dress nicer or wear flashier jewelry that demands attention? What do you do? You tell yourself that you deserve the same attention as the other buyers have. So, you buy the most expensive item on the list, only to regret it when you get back home. Don't fall into this trap. There are many ways you can validate your self-worth without splurging on things you don't need. Number 2. You want to impress others. This behavior is almost similar to seeking validation. However, the goal is to improve your likability to someone you admire. Much like teens wanting to belong to a group, buying things you don't need because you want to impress others is not frugal living. It would be best to analyze your reasons for buying a particular item. Is it because you need it for a job, school, or a house chore? Or do you intend to buy it to impress others that you belong to their group? For example, you might think you must buy the latest Apple iPhone because everyone in your circle of friends has an iPhone 13 Pro Max. Or you might want to buy a Tesla because everyone in the tech department has one. Again, if these are your reasons for buying that thing, think no further. Don't buy it. Number 1. You find shopping frustrating. One of the advantages of today's commerce is that you get many good products to choose from. Too many for comfort, actually. You can get hundreds of similar products, all at affordable prices. It can be frustrating to choose from thousands of products, all promising the same thing. I understand your disappointments because I do that myself too. Shopping for the best product can be frustrating, especially if you are unsure of what you're looking for. And even if you do, chances are you will still have several tens of products to choose from. Sadly, if something doesn't catch your attention, you'll fall into the trap of buying the next one you come across. The downside here is that the item you bought hardly interests you. It's a spur-of-the-moment decision that you simply have to buy just because you've been spending countless hours shopping. The sad news is that once you make the purchase, you'll regret buying that thing and toss it in your closet never to use it.